So as was mentioned, I'm from uh, the University of Buffalo in New York, and I would like to extend the regards of all of New York State to you here in Bloodstorm. Of course, New York State doesn't know that I'm extending those regards, but <laughs> you, you can give me your regards and take back to them, and then you'll know that you're sending their regards, your regards. Uh, first, let me thank Dr. Jagadish for kindly inviting me here to present this keynote address. I have to admit, when I first received his invitation, that I was <clears throat> somewhat hesitant to accept it because I know nothing about operations management and I'm talking on big data and I'm also a neophyte in big data. My experience with big data uh, consists of two narrowly defined research projects and statistics on high dimensional data analysis. So when he asked me to present, I told him, I explained this to him and said that, you know, I really not qualified, I'm not a, an authority in, in these areas to present. So um, we hung up and I thought about it a little bit more. The more I thought about it, I realized that I did have some something that I wanted to share with you, some ideas about big data. And so when he called back, I accepted his invitation and I'm here now. The um, I hope that, that what I have to present will be of some interest to you. Um, I mentioned the word high dimensionality, so I want to start off and I'll mention it freely throughout the, the conversation. So I want to start out with a definition of high dimensionality in case uh, some of you may not be familiar with it. Uh, high dimensionality refers to a situation where you're doing a multivariate statistical analysis uh, on um, a set of variables, say p variables, with a sample of size n, where p is larger than n. Uh, of course, in such situations, the uh, usual statistical methods break down, and there needs to be new developments, statistical developments, methodological developments, that uh, provide appropriate methods for handling such data. So this, this was my first foray into, high, uh, into uh, big data analyses was uh, in the arena of high dimensional data analysis. But in the process of doing that, I learned a little bit about big data and what it is. Let's see, how do I... Oops, that wasn't the right one. So the first question is, what is big data? Uh, well, first of all, you have to recognize that big data is a buzzword. And as with every other buzzword, it's often a con represents a concept or a phenomenon that is hard to, hard to describe or hard to define. And that's true of, of big data. It's, it's hard to define. Most of the definitions come from the perspective of computer scientists, data managers, and informaticists who have been working in the area. And they reflect the characteristics of big data that uh, cause them complications in their work. Um, Dr. Bernard Marr, uh, in, in a uh, LinkedIn blog called Pulse, uh, defined it in a little bit more, still vague, and, uh, but a little bit more satisfying way to me. He said that big data, or that uh, big data is a phenomenon that is uh, due to the datification of our world and the increasing ability to analyze data in a way that has never, was never possible before. This gets at the idea of the cause of big data, the datification, datification of, of the uh, world with digitizing of, of data and so on. So it's, it's massive because there's so much digitizing going on. But um, 
more, more than massiveness, uh, big data is other things as well. And the computer science definition of it that basically is about volume or oftentimes called 3Bs or 5Bs um, that characterize big data uh, is, is not really, in my opinion as a statistician, is not really a sufficient definition or characterization of the concept. Dr. Marr, a uh, quote him from the blog, says, of course, data collection isn't its, it, uh, itself isn't new. We as humans have been collecting and storing data since far back, as far back as 18,000 BCE. What's new are the recent technological advances in chip and sensor technology, the internet, cloud computing, and our ability to store and analyze <coughs> data <coughs> that have changed the quantity of, of data that we can collect. So that's the, the bigness of it, is just the sheer volume. But not all big data is, is high volume, as I'll discuss later. So I, I find that most attempts to define big data uh, are not very satisfying. And Dr. Marr in his blog also said that, uh, you know, that there's as many definitions of big data as there are people who work in the area, almost. So um, the world is full of data. Uh, much of it is different in nature than data in the past, and that's what I think causes complications for statisticians, as I'll discuss later. Uh, both the massiveness of the data and the different structure of the data pose problems for computer scientists and engineers to solve. I contend that it is the new nature of the data, primarily, that poses the problems for statisticians to solve. The sheer volume of the data uh, causes issues with regard to uh, storage, the usual sorts of things that computer scientists are worried about. Data capture, storage, processing, curation, sharing, transfer, and visualization. And they make them challenging. Uh, the volume, that, but, but the complexities of the data go beyond just the sheer volume. Uh, the Wikipedia definition of big data is big data is a broad term that uh, for data sets so large and complex that traditional data processing applications are inadequate. So again, it emphasizes the inadequate nature of our current systems for handling big data. And then they go on to talk about the multiple D definitions. And the one that they present was one from Hilbert at UCLA, I believe, which is the 5B version of definition, actual characterization, not definition, of big data. And the 5Bs are volume, variety, velocity, variability, and veracity. That definition or characterization leaves me feeling unenlightened as a statistician. So, and I think that's because the character, characterization emphasizes more the complexities that result from the volume of the data that cause issues and challenging issues for computer scientists. For me, there's different issues. Uh, the problem, uh, the, the 5B characterization, uh, as I said, is, is computer science centric. But as a statistician, I find the characterization of data according to the types of analyses that we might do on it is a more satisfying definition. So I don't claim this is a, a general definition that would be satisfying to everyone, but from a statistical point of view, it's one that, um, that is uh, helpful for, uh, for me and other statisticians. And that is the, the definition that I propose is that big data are massive in volume, high dimensional, or unstructured in nature. So, where are we? Computer scientists and engineers have solved much of the, many of the problems associated with uh, collection and storage and management 
of high volume and high velocity data. And infrastructures exist now to capture and store the data and to manage it. Um, so that, that phase of big data, the infancy phase, if you, if you want to call it that, is pretty much over. Different, many universities have the capability now to, the, the computer systems and the, the capacity to collect and store big data and to manage it. Where the uh, discipline is now turning, or the phenomenon is now turning, is toward analyzing big data, uh, getting value from it, extracting information that leads to actionable knowledge. <clears throat> So um, that's, that's the first point that I want to make about where we are. We're in that second phase, but it's the very beginning of it. So the, there was a study done by the... Oh, well, okay. So first I, I wanted to uh, define computer science and, and statistics so that you can see what I'm talking about when I say the different perspectives. So computer science is the science of computation and its application. It deals with theory and methods of processing information, i.e. data, and digital computers. The design of computer hardware and software and the applications of computer computer software and computational methods. So computer science clearly is, is a big part of big data, the phenomenon of big data. But you can, as you, when you look at the 5D definition of big data, or characterization of big data, you can see how it's slanted toward the challenges that the people who do this type of work face. Statisticians, on the other hand, um, look at it differently because of the nature of the statistical science. Statistical science is the study of generalizability and extraction of knowledge from data. So you can see as we move from the infancy stages of building the computing infrastructure to store and manage large volume, high velocity data sets to the analysis of it where statistics will have to be playing a larger, a larger role in the phenomenon. So this is the summary of a report. I said we're in the infancy, early stage of that second phase. This is a report by the uh, Economist Intelligence Unit, uh, uh, unit in 2015 that summarizes an interview with, or interviews with top executives from 555 companies from around the world. The world was well, rep well represented and they interviewed top executives from these companies. All of the companies had uh, gross revenues of over 50 million, I think it was. Um, so they're reasonably, reasonably sized companies. And as you can see, th this graphic shows the state of the uh, companies with regard to their value and their feeling of importance of data, not just big data, but data in general, in 2011, the bars on the left, the light blue bars, and uh, 2015 at the time of this report, the dark blue bars. And you can see that there's been a shift to the left uh, in the uh, attitudes or in the state of the uh, data capacity, data understanding, the value of data within these companies. The leftmost category is data is the question, yes or no, data have completely changed the way we do business. The second one, data have become an important tool that drives the strategic decisions of the company. The third one, data are among the many sources of input used to steer the business. And then the others are less appreciative use of, of data. So you can see that from 2011 to 2015, that there's been a shift toward appreciating data and using it strategically for business, uh, steering businesses.
big data was the impetus for a uh, science that's been created called data sciences. And there are programs and courses in data sciences popping up everywhere in the United States, at least, and I assume around the world. And this is uh, my conceptualization of what data science is. So on the left, we have statistics. In the middle oval, white, blue, we have uh, data science. And on the right, we have computer science. And what I'm trying to illustrate here is that data sciences is a dis discipline that carves out work from both computer science and from statistics. Now, the state of the art is such that it carves out more from computer science than it does from statistics, but that's one of the points that I want to make when I get to where do we go from here, uh, that, that part of the talk. So uh, data science, actually, the definition of it is something that, um, in its most general form, would encompass statistics. Statistics is the science of extracting uh, and generalizing information from data and transferring it into knowledge. The definition of data science, if you look at is very similar. But they're not the same. Data science also includes much of what computer scientists do. So data science is the fusion of the two disciplines, or the parts of the two disciplines that apply most to big data. Uh, and it also in includes other people. It's not just computer scientists and statisticians. Uh, it includes application areas of individuals such as yourself in, in management sciences, uh, informatics, and other sciences, sciences where big data is an issue. So, uh, where we are to review that is we've passed the infancy stage of big data where it was nothing but a buzzword and then transformed into a motivating factor for developing data capacity within companies and universities. And we're now transitioning into a period of time where uh, data is being seen as a strategic uh, tool or strategic piece of, of, of a company's uh, planning and, and uh, to uh, and, and the need there is to um, extract knowledge from data. So we have masses of data, but how do we get valuable knowledge from them? Well, that's where, in my opinion, statistics comes in, and statistics has been pretty much left uh, out of the discussion of big data, partly because we're not aggressive, assertive enough in, in getting into it, but partly because the field became dominated by others before statisticians were into it, and uh, statisticians basically have not been invited to the table uh, that of, of the thought leaders who are directing the phenomenon of big data. So that's the first thing that, that uh, I think needs to change because we're now moving into a phase where statistics should be front and center with regard to uh, advancing big data, extracting value from the big data that exists. So statisticians have yet, though, to fulfill their uh, great potential to contribute solutions to big data problems. Computer scientists, as I mentioned, have solved many of the data capacity problems, computing system problems, uh, but statisticians must solve other problems eventually that, uh, that result, the challenges that result from big data that require different methods of solution. As an example, high dimensional data analysis. High dimensional data analysis, as I said, is a uh, defines a situation where you're doing a multivariate analysis of p variables with n observations and p is greater than n. So classical statistical methods break down when that's the case. For example, if you're doing a regression analysis of an outcome variable on, on p minus 1 independent variables, 
x's, and you want to do, you would ordinarily do, if you didn't have the high dimensionality problem, you would ordinarily do ordinary least squares, which of course requires the inversion of the matrix x prime x. Well, that matrix, in the case of high dimensional data, is not invertible. And so the methodology breaks down. And in situations like this, where statisticians need to develop new methods that will uh, solve such problems and allow you to do regression analysis, for example, in the face of big data. So uh, there was a report recently by the World Economic Forum and NC on Global IT Report 2014. And in that report, uh, Anand Gupta, who is the president and chief executive author of HCL Technologies in Noida, is that how you pronounce it? Noida, India? Noida. Noida? Noida. Good enough? <laughs> Noida. Okay. Um, he wrote, big data analytics is not a passing fact. It will be central, it will be a central means of creating value for the organization of tomorrow. And that is tomorrow almost literally. It represents a major change in the way that businesses and other organizations will operate and will require a new mindset and new capabilities. The new capabilities that Dr. Gupta or Mr. Gupta is referring to include uh, data capacity, including capacity, uh, but specifically to include to increase capacity to draw statistical inferences and predictions from big data with known levels of confidence. Reproducible results. Okay? Much of, not much, but I don't know that for sure, but, but many studies that you see that analyze big data are producing results, but they won't be reproducible because of the overfitted problem. Those of you who know statistical modeling understand the issue of overfitting models, and when models are overfit, predictions are unreliable in future observations. So that's the issue that, faith, that uh, people are faced with, with high dimensional data, and that problem has occurred much in the literature. So um, we're not just talking about doing analyses of high dimensional data, but doing analyses that, that provide reproducible results. And that's what statisticians need to do, develop new methods. So, um, people have referred to this complication that I'm talking about as the curse of big data. How many of you have heard of that term, the curse of big data? It, it refers, it refers to this, this phenomenon that I'm saying where if you have a large number of variables that you're analyzing simultaneously with a, relative, with a smaller number of samples, small n, then you have a high dimensional problem and that causes this challenge of overfitting, which is, which is the, what's meant by the, one of the things that is meant by the curse of big data. So, what's the second issue then that is being faced uh, because of this phenomenon? It's scarcity of, of talent. So, uh, statisticians must become more involved, players on panels and direct developments in big data, and in research to solve methodological issues. The next big step is deriving value, as Mr. Gupta says, from big data and extracting knowledge from it and turning it into actionable knowledge. Uh, the next one that I'm starting on now is that we must solve the manpower issue. There's a definite shortage of talent for uh, statistical science or uh, for data science that's needed in companies, government, and academics. And uh, this, this shortage of personnel must be solved. That requires universities to step up and train more students who are able to uh, analyze and interpret data appropriately. The new types of data, big data, 
appropriately. So concerning that issue, there this uh, 2014 report has uh, provided some statistics that are interesting. If I can find them here. Yeah, I'll, I'll just read a quote from that. Uh, this is Mr. Gupta again. Estimates suggest that in the United States alone faces uh, that the United States alone faces a shortage of 140,000 to 190,000 people in deep analytic skills, as well as 1.5 million analysts and managers to analyze big data and make decisions based on those findings. Uh, other report, another report predicts that only one third of the 4.4 million big data jobs created in 2015 will be filled. Unlike traditional analytics, finding big data requires extremely diverse, uh, an extremely diverse set of skills, deep business insights, data visualization, statistics, machine learning, and computer programming. Policy should work to mitigate, policy makers that is, should work to mitigate uh, this shortage of talent through forward-looking education and immigration policies. So it's clear that in the United States at least, and I suspect worldwide, that um, this problem exists. There's an extreme shortage of talent and universities need to step up to produce uh, more students who are capable of working in the area of big data. So the, the uh, last section of my talk has, I just wanted to give a couple examples and, but I'm not sure I have time. How much, how much time do I have? Maybe. Five minutes? Okay. So the first example is one that I'm involved in. Of course, I'm doing research in biomedical science, so uh, this will not be that relevant to you, but hopefully you'll be able to make a trans translation to some of the problems that you face. So this is a high-dimensional data analysis problem, and it's a problem that we would do regression analysis on. We want to predict the y variable given uh, p independent variables, p x variables. Uh, but because P is greater than greater than M, uh, we have an issue, and new methods need to be developed. So one of our research efforts was to develop those methods based on what we call high-dimensional factor analysis regression. Now, the solution to big data problems from a statistical point of view has to be to reduce the dimensionality of the data. And uh, we know principal components as a way of reducing dimensionality, but it's not satisfying for this particular problem. I'll get into that this, this afternoon in my talk on, on the research that we've been doing. Uh, partial least squares is a solution to this problem, but also not satisfying because it, it is also plagued by overfitting. So we developed a new method based on high dimensional factor analysis, and the concept underlying it is that in order to solve high dimensional problems, there has to be an underlying structure that is lower dimensional and one that can be handled with current methods. So we use a factor analysis to identify the lower dimensional structure and then we use the estimates of that, the parameters of that lower dimensional structure to estimate the prediction equation to predict y from x. So that's a high dimensional regression problem. The second research, and I think there's probably many uh, examples that you have in your work in the, in, uh, as MBA students and faculty, that where you would like to use regression, but you have a larger number of predictor variables than you have, uh, than you have observations. So that method would be applied to those types of problems. And then we also use uh, high dimensional factor analysis uh, for gene discovery and genetic risk assessment, which I won't get into because it's not really one that's that related to your, uh, to your field, but it does give you an example of the type of problems that are faced with uh, high-dimensional data. 
So, uh, in closing, I would like to again thank Dr. Jagdish Beach for inviting me and, uh, and for all of you for attending my talk. Uh, in conclusion, the phenomenon of big data is moving beyond its buzzword phase, which is very good development. Much more progress needs to be made. And the potentials for big data, that the, the potential that big data holds for individuals, companies, and countries that master the science of extracting actionable knowledge from it is enormous and therefore uh, certainly a valuable pursuit for all of us. Thank you.